thanks everyone for joining us for our uh, Project Lavina webinar. If you've been looking for a fast and easy way to bring 3D production scenes into real time, then you're in the right spot. Project Lavina is an application we've been building at Chaos, so you can explore in, and interact with your scenes all ray traced in real time. I'm Lon Gross, the head of creative at Chaos. I'm joined by our resident Lavina expert and product manager, Simeon uh, Balabanov. And for the first part of our webinar, Simeon, Simeon and I will walk you through what Lavina can do, how easy it is to use, and then most importantly, how it can help you visualize your projects in real time. In the second part of our webinar, we're going to hear from our friends at Brick Visual. They're a world-renowned architectural visualization firm. We're joined uh, by Attila Chalovsky, the Chief Development Officer at Brick. Uh, Brick's been communicating architecture through high-end visualization since 2012. And they're known for their work on major projects such as architecture firms, uh, for architecture firms such as Big, uh, Snowheda, and SOM, just to name a few. Attila and the team at Brick have been using Lavina since the very early beta. Uh, giving Simeon and our team some great feedback. So he's going to share his experience so far with Lavina, how it fits into their workflow. And then I also want to say a uh, really quick thanks to, uh, to him and the team from Brick uh, for sharing the production scene that we're going to be showing uh, throughout our demo. So let me switch my screen over to Simeon, and uh, he's going to go ahead and get us started on how to bring a scene into Lavina. Thanks, Lon. This is, uh, this is the scene um, in 3ds Max. Um, and again, thanks to Attila for providing the scene and, and to, bring, to the team at Brick Visuals. Um, as you can see, this is a quite heavy scene. It's, uh, it's already uh, about 14 millions of, uh, of polygons. And this is not even counting the uh, vegetation. Um, so, so yeah, this is this is uh, uh, this is the original thing uh, that we're going to be use. Uh, sorry, we're going to be importing in uh, Lavina. Um, so uh, that, of course, is not going to be any any issue. In uh, let me just zo zoom in. We have a few cameras here. Um, I have selected uh, I have selected the first one to be the the render camera, and this is important because the way um, the way the uh, VR scene file works is that you can only have a single camera um, at this time, and uh, whenever you export or whichever camera you export your scene from, this is going to be your home or default camera in Lavina. And uh, this poly count actually won't be any um, any problem for Lavina because it's a fully ray traced render, and um, and it will render all these trees over here, um, including uh, the the more densely populated uh, vegetation um, over there in front of the house. So um, I'm not going to export the scene right now, um, just just because it takes uh, uh, takes some time. But the process is uh, fairly straightforward. You just uh, you just select uh, VRC and export and uh, set up your options. Uh, the one important thing that I should note here is that if you have animation and you would like to see that or include that in the in the VR scene, you should check the export animation from here. And then you hit export, and this is done. Um, all right. Um, so let's let's move ahead and uh, um, import that in Lavinia. I have the Lavinia open up here. Opened up here. This is the uh, startup scene that you get every time when you launch Lavinia in the beginning. Um, and let's quickly. Um, sorry, I'm just going to drag and drop that. Um, I have it over here. So this is the production scene. Oops. That was 3ds Max. Apologies for that. <laughs> <laughs> Too many. And I think that now I I I made 3ds Max uh, try to load up a VR scene, which it doesn't know what to do. Yeah, it didn't so, like that. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> so I might be uh, I might need to kill it just so that we don't waste too much time. But uh, okay. 
at least everybody right. on the webinar knows that it's a truly <laughs> live demo, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, so now we load the scene in the appropriate <laughs> application. And as you can see, uh, it it loads up uh, relatively relatively quick. Um, this is from a network location, so it takes some time. Uh, it, it, it might take more time uh, than uh, from your local SSD, for example. And if you pay close attention here uh, uh, to the last to the last uh, statistics here, this is the instance faces, um, and uh, they will go pretty high. So you can keep an eye on that. Um, the the final number that we're getting to would be um, would be uh, five uh, five hundred and eighty, I believe, or sixty billions of polygons. That's bil so, billion with a B, right? Yeah, that's billion with a B. <laughs> uh, maybe so, I should have. While that's loading, I'm sure people are going to be wondering, uh, you know, one of the first questions I'll ask is, what kind of hardware are you running this on? Can you tell everybody what's in your system? Um, yeah, I... Now, now, now that I'm thinking about it, I, I should have uh, I should have loaded this from the local drive. But anyway, um, so I'm using I'm using um, NVIDIA GeForce um, RTX 2080 Ti. Um, this is um, uh, this is uh, the, the the graphics card that Lavina is going to be using for rendering, um, and the CPU is. Uh, let me pull up my uh, my task manager. And the CPU is um, i7 uh, 3960 at uh, 3.3 gigahertz. And I have uh, 64 GB of RAM. Um, but to speed the process up, of course, I should have uh, loaded this uh, fr from the local hard drive. However, yeah, 580 billion polygons is uh, the total number in the end. Um, this is including all the trees and and yeah. Okay, so yeah, apologies for this. Um, I'm just going to quickly. Not, I just, I just realized that I should have done this from the local drive, uh, which I do uh, have. So I'm going to do this really quickly. Man, yeah, no worries. And um, just. <clears throat> and while you're doing that, I just want to remind everybody that um, currently so Project yeah. Lavina is in beta. Um, so. If you're interested at all in trying to check this out for yourself, uh, I'll pull up a link later that'll show you, but you can go to chaosgroup.com slash Lavina and uh, download it and give it a try. Um, so I just wanted to, to let everybody know that, uh, you know, it's it's free to access right now in beta and you can bring in your scenes, any of your V-Ray scenes and give it a whirl. Yeah. And yeah, now it's now it's much faster. Um, it takes just under a minute. Um, and actually, there is also a statistics window that uh, we can check right after the scene has been loaded. But it's it's noticeably uh, quicker. And yeah, now we should see everything. So the 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 moment Lavina has loaded everything, you you get to see it. Um, now, one thing that I did previously when I when I exported the uh, the scene was that I didn't um, include the um, the environment map here, and that was on purpose. Um, and 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 the reason for this was that I really wanted to show how you can just uh, simply um, drag and drop any EXR or HDRI R directly in Lavina's viewport. And it's just going to uh, render it out and load it for you. So this makes it uh, much much easier to um, to load up any HDRIs that you might want. All right, and um, I'm also going to quickly set up the exposure here to uh, value because that was the original um, that was the original intent. This currently is not still yet. Uh, this is an exposure value, and this is not uh, currently read directly from the VR scene, although it's uh, written there, so it kept the original uh, 20 uh, exposure value stops. So so uh, the only thing that I just needed to uh, do was just select either exposure value or a physical uh, 
uh, exposure, which will rely on the film speed and F number and shutter speed um, as, as an alternative. But I'm going to just use the exposure value here. Okay, um, let's check the statistics real quick. Um, to to and this was on my other screen. So uh, 52.28 seconds uh, for the whole scene. All right. Um, let's. Uh, so now that you're look, now that you've yeah. got it loaded in there, Simeon, how how can you navigate around? How is how can you move around the scene? Right. Okay. Um, well, it's 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 actually very easy. We we we've included uh, a couple of um, um, DCC mode navigations and also uh, one uh, one more intuitive or more inherent to to real time applications such as uh, such as game engines. So. Um, the game engine one is uh, is to when you hold down the right uh, the right mouse button, and then you're able to use the WASD keys on the keyboard um, to to walk around. This is intended for uh, first person mode. Um, you can also press the shift button to to speed up uh, temporarily the, the the movement speed. Um, and it also this mode actually is bound to the full screen mode that can be activated uh, from from here. Uh, the the free look it uh, has a shortcut of the tilde key. So if you do this, um, you can see that we go we go uh, in full screen. And one other option I should mention is the the uh, fill option, which will make sure that whenever you're in full screen. Um, the the window is uh, filling up every every space that uh, you might want to to, to do, uh, sorry to uh, well to use. Um, the alternative mode would be a DCC uh, mode, and I'm currently using um, currently using uh, a Maya uh, based uh, preset, but uh, which works with the old um, left mouse button to orbit, uh, middle mouse button to pan. And uh, right mouse button to to zoom. All these with Alt, uh, but you can go to the preferences and um, and go into the interaction and choose different preset uh, such as 3ds Max and SketchUp. And let's actually go ahead and use the 3ds Max now. Um, here is also the mouse sensitivity, which is an important uh, parameter when you when you want you you might want to tweak if you want to. Uh, speed up your um, mouse for, or slow down your mouse for uh, when you want to find the perfect or fine tune the the mouse. Uh, so now uh, now it's uh, now it's uh, 3ds Max, which is just a simple uh, sorry, uh, just middle mouse button uh, panning, Alt and mouse button, middle mouse button orbit, and then Control Alt and uh, mouse button, middle mouse button to zoom, or the scroller to zoom, just like in 3ds Max. So I can see as you're orbiting around there, you know, one of the things that we talk about for for Lavina is its ability to bring in all of this amount of geometry uh, without any optimizations, without having to to go through any hoops to to bring it in. Can you show somebody, you know, maybe zoom in down into the grass or any one of those trees mm -hmm. just to just to show how much detail is actually in the scene? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go. Let's go. Further down in the grass, and and just you know observe all the the polygons here, and and I'm currently lost, but <laughs> but we can just uh, let me uh, let let me actually increase the movement speed here because this is a field, and it will be much easier to to um, to navigate so like so. Okay, so uh, this hole here is 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 different types of grass, and um, and there are some artifacts from the denoiser because the movement is really quickly. Uh, but if I do if I do a bit slower movement, you can see um, everything here. And if I go upwards, you can see a lot of lot of, of of trees. And actually, I'm going to speed up my camera even more and just uh, just navig navigate through all the, the trees and then go here and, and dig deeper. Actually, if if you have a look, um, if you pay close attention. Um, the trees currently are using planes and uh, opacity maps, um, and currently Lavina uh, hasn't uh, enabled those. But we can do this really quickly by uh, using this option here, opacity maps, and now the trees look um, as they should. Oops, I don't know where I went. 
So I'm just going to um, turn back and head over to the house. Oops, I should have I should have set up um, a camera, so I'll be using the home uh, <laughs> camera to go back quickly. And just the, the one thing I need to do is revert back the exposure. So let's let's set up a, a camera here with the proper exposure. Um, actually, if you note if you noticed, um, once I once I uh, enabled the um, opacity clip mode um, it actually slowed down the frame rate a, a little bit and uh, this is because uh, opacity is actually tracing geometry as well it's just uh, disregarding um, the parts of the, the of the poly that are not visible uh, but still this uh, this affects performance so um, if if possible I, I would always suggest having a, uh, a geometry cutout tree but in this case uh, of course we we do have opacity map so we we can't we can't get away with it um, and this is a good opportunity for me to showcase uh, or to, to 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 run you through the interface um, in cases where you would like to uh, increase the performance um, you or uh, yeah, one of the things that you could do really quickly uh, is change the resolution, and this is why this is the first thing that we have in here. Um, the, the, these are the presets of the resolution, so so I'm just going to quickly um, switch it down to to uh, a bit smaller resolution to get faster frame frame rate. And now um, I'm not sure if this is visible very well from the streaming uh, from the webinar, but uh, Lovina is uh, is uh, keeping about 30 frames per second. It's much more responsive. Um, and and much more enjoyable. Um, so so yeah, and then if we move down, um, here we have things like aspect ratio, the fill button I already uh, showed. Uh, we have also a collision button, um, which uh, makes Lavina trace collisions uh, so that you don't fall through floors or bump in, or you can bump in in in, in walls, uh, for example. And to demonstrate that, I'm just going to go quickly inside of the, or maybe around the house. <laughs> um and let's let's actually slow down the movement enable the collision and go into full screen and as you can see now even if i want to go through the wall um lavina will, will not let me and because collisions are enabled and i can disable them temporarily by pressing the c key go through um and uh, and enable it again by pressing the c the c key again and uh, let's let's climb uh, on top of these chairs, uh, sorry, stairs. Okay, so now I can also climb stairs. Um, so getting out of the uh, first-person mode, let's uh, let's go back to the original camera. We also have uh, a few other options, such as uh, um, such as the manipulation uh, coordinate system, selection tool, movement, or all the all the transformation tools here. We also have a, an option to pick up the camera focus and various uh, navigation, sorry, uh, manipulation options for um, changing temporarily the pivot point of an object. For example, if I want to select this tree, um, I can just change its pivot um, to over here and then manipulate along this pivot. Of course, I wouldn't want to do that, so, so let's re revert that. Uh, finally, we also have options to change the navigation around the a cursor hit or uh, the target the selection and uh, again if you if you remember I mentioned uh, changing the sensitivity if you want to find this perfect shot uh, currently currently um, I might find that um, the orbiting around the, the this this uh, um, the, the house is uh, very very strong or very very fast um, so what I can do is just uh, say, okay, let's let's uh, navigate around selection, select the house, so that I'm so that now I'm orbiting right, oops, so that I'm orbiting um, right around this uh, this house or the window, and then because this is very fast, I might be uh, I can I can just press this button over here, which will increase the sensitivity or 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 decrease the speed of the mouse and allow, allow me to fine tune this perfect angle that I'm looking for. Um, so this is a very neat option uh, to have in mind. Um, the rest of the interface is uh, the, th the things that you might want to do with, with the scene or the way to interact with the scene. You can see those tabs here on the, on the right and the left. Uh, we have uh, render settings, 
post production settings, uh, camera settings. We already uh, I already showed a couple of those, and also things that you can do with your scene. Let me just move the uh, go to webinar thing out of the way. We we have the light section, which allows uh, which allows as you see uh, um, assigning different um, different uh, for example uh, AGRIs. Uh, for example, I can use this one. These are the recent ones that I used. And this guy doesn't have too much of intensity, so let's bump it up and see. Okay, this is more of a night sky. Um, and uh, quickly go back to the original one. And um, because currently this is using 10, uh, let's bring it back to one. Uh, change the rotation of the, the uh, HDRI and and uh, uh, see see it affect the, the image-based lighting at real time. Um, and also do all kinds of different things with the lights. Uh, for example, globally enabling all the lights and the environment currently is not treated as a dome light. Um, this is a little bit different than in 3ds Max. Um, Lavina always has an environment that uses as a image-based lighting. And uh, the idea here is to save or to remove some some uh, clutter from the interface so we combine the environment together with the with the dome light uh, here and if you want to do uh, to have a different environment you can do so from here as well we also have the option to use a physical sky by the way um, which which is the procedural sky uh, that very generates uh, we'll have a look at this in just a minute I just want to finish with the overview of the interface. So this is the setting for all the lights that you have in the scene. You can think of this as a light lister in a way. Uh, we have a material lister, um, which allows a very basic functionality to select object by material and assign different materials to current two different objects. And also an outliner, object outliner, which allows you to uh, toggle visibility of different objects um, or select by um, by uh, from the list actually so for example if i select this this guy over here hide it and yeah it's gone um so yeah so, so that would cover uh the best the basic the basic uh, uh functionality the last uh, the, the last thing i didn't mention is uh, the stat status bar here at the bottom but uh, we saw it in action in the beginning and uh, also it uh, shows a little bit status uh, status information uh, uh, a cool feature is also that if you hover the tooltip will show you the number of accumulated samples um, and the performance uh, of your machine or of your workstation <clears throat> so let's say i wanted to uh, take a snapshot of what this is and send it to somebody is how can i do that in lavina Right. Um, well, it's it's fairly it's fairly straightforward. Actually, um, we have uh, a few options to do that. Uh, you can immediately take a screenshot of exactly what you're seeing and what it what it looks like with the current uh, quality uh, by pressing this button over here. It's a quick save snapshot, and it's going to pop up uh, directly in the folder mm, in the folder where uh, the image is. Uh, here it is. This is the this is the image that I just captured. Um, or alternatively, you can also press uh, the render high quality uh, snapshot, which will pop up, uh, will prompt you for a resolution that you want and amount of samples that you might want to uh, allow for Lavina to, 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 or you can think of this as quality, and then uh, hit start and it will render out um, uh, for the uh, amount of samples that you wanted to. And then what about something like an animation? Can you can you export an animation or create that out of this? Yeah, absolutely. Um actually I I, I was uh, I was saving this uh for a bit later. Um so I didn't show that part in the interface, but uh creating animations um is is uh, very straightforward uh, with the addition of the time editor or timeline editor um that we did uh just a, a, a version back and um and actually you can think of of uh, animating with lavina in 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 two ways um the first or uh, as a two-step process and the first I, I i really promote users thinking in in this that lavina is is a, is a 3d viewer first or, or or scene explorer um and you can just go around and as i as i just did you know increase a little bit the, the sensitivity or sorry the speed and uh, find out really nice interesting looking angles of of uh, of your of your scene um and set up 
multiple cameras by creating uh, by creating camera snapshots or, or uh, viewpoints or camera presets um, in this list over here. So I I did one uh, one other. Um, let's let's make a, a really really nice top view, which will which will start from here. We can see all the nice uh, all the nice trees and also I, I would like to see the skyline because I might change the uh, illumination here later on. So uh, store this as a map, um, and then and then let's actually make it a slow panning shot, and uh, right like like so. Create yet another camera. So I'm not going to overdo this. We have just the two two different two different uh, uh, transitions, or actually they they're going to become three. So now uh, a really uh, a really useful thing of Lavinia is being able to present this uh, first. You know to yourself try this uh, for yourself um or maybe at the customer without even the need to to make animations um so if you see here the f numbers uh here uh, these are the keyboards on uh, the key the key bindings on the keyboard so if i press f1 f2 and f3 i'm going to switch between these cameras but you can also just simply click and uh, lavin is going to do a transition um, I'm I'm pretty sure that uh, GoToWebinar is is stripping up the smooth transition. So so I'm just uh, um, pointing out that currently Lavina makes a smooth transition between these cameras. The, the when I whenever I click a single as, or single click with the with the left mouse button. If I double click, Lavina will teleport directly um, to the camera. So this is a quick way for you to validate the cameras and the animations that you want to achieve. And once you're happy with that, you can just pull up the um, editor. And as I said, you can just use the the um, hotkeys as well if you if you want to use uh, your uh, both of your hands uh, to to navigate. But um, for the timeline editor, <clears throat> there there are a couple of uh, a couple of interesting um, uh, options here. Um, the first one is if you have exported animation uh, within the uh, VR scene, it will be baked into this green layer, the scene animation, um, and you can toggle on and off a layer by pressing the, those uh, red uh, rectangles in front of them. And uh, the camera animation layer is intended to, for you to drag and drop uh, camera presets or camera camera clips from here, stack them over here, and make animations, much like a video editing application. Now, uh, one important thing to note here is that the default location here is, uh, sorry, the default duration that we'll have for a clip will be two seconds. And uh, we also have a snapping, which I'm going to set to, um, let's say I'm going to snap at uh, 10 seconds, or actually, no, a bit lower, five, uh, sorry, not seconds, but five uh, frames. So five frames. I'm going to switch back to time, which uh, so five frames is about uh, 0.28 seconds. All right, so let's do a, a real quick animation, dragging the first camera now, and um, I'm going to drag yet a second one here at the end. And uh, since I don't see them, I'm just going to Alt scroll down um, on the with my cursor on top of the timeline to 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 zoom out and see both of the clicks, uh, clips here. And currently, if I if I uh, place my cursor at the bottom here with the time markers and uh, scrub, it's going to scrub the timeline. And currently, I just have a stepped in interpolation or uh, no 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 interpolation between the two cameras, and and, and Lavina just quickly switches from one um, uh, camera to the other. This is useful if you want to make a, a sharp cut, uh, but this is not the case. So I would like to have a transition, and I'm just going to simply right click and say add transition after because I clicked on the left but I could also click on the on the right and say add transition before uh, zoom out again and currently um, we have a two minute linear transition oh, sorry two second linear transition between these two clips um, again not sure if uh, go to webinar um, displays smoothly so so uh, I'm just going to uh, scrub it really 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 slow so that you can see the the uh, type of the animation and i'm doing this because this uh, this is a currently a linear uh, uh, linear animation and it's going to start somewhat abruptly from one camera and stop somewhat abruptly um, in, in other words there is no easing so if you want to apply easing i can right click on the transition and i have several options here um, 
to 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 choose from uh, in trans in easing out easing or both so i'm just going to select both and now uh, the transition is going to start really really smooth using qu qu quadratic interpolation for the more uh, technical savvy for, for, from the our user viewers and uh, end with an easing out which makes it really nice um, a, a real nice animation then moving on um, I'm going to drag the third camera here uh, zoom out and since this is a since this is a complete change of the angle I'm going to use this as a as a as an abrupt or a step transition so no change here and i'm just going to drag the fourth camera again zoom out right click add transition after and keep it linear in uh, this way because i would like to get uh, a nice uh, panning uh, shot smooth panning shot with a linear transition uh, but what i would like to achieve is uh, currently this this um, the camera trick clip he has uh, he has a length of about two seconds so i don't want to do this i want to make it uh, just a keyframe so i will right click here and say make transient and this will make it orange and really really tiny which means that the moment we switch to this camera uh the transition starts and uh, we have a nice um a nice transition from one camera to the other and i can also make this transient as well so now when I play my whole total animation um, is going to start smoothly from here and then stay a little bit there and then cut to the other shot and uh, use a linear uh, transition. Now to me it was a bit fast uh, so I can change the duration of some of the uh, clips like so and um, I'll leave it up to, 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 the, to the beta testers to, to, to experiment with all, the anim with all the settings here that we have. Um, just wanted to give a quick overview of all the functionality that we can. Uh, to finish off, um, I'm just going to set, uh, show how you can render the, the quality sequence, the high quality sequence or um, the sequence from here. And uh, you decide if it's going to be a higher quality or a lower quality um, by using a couple of, a couple of uh, options here that uh, we will take a look at later. But, uh, but the first one would be the number of samples here and Lavina and, and the resolution, of course. And Lavina is going to render the whole sequence here uh, to a sequence of frames um, on your hard drive. Uh, okay, um, I think I have a little bit of time to just quickly, uh, to just quickly um, mention the other quality settings that that I that we are uh, also um, uh, added in in the last uh, version of Lovina and that's uh, that's uh, located in the, the render settings and that's the noise threshold the noise threshold actually introduces adaptive sampling which means that some pixels are going to be um, sampled more or rendered uh, with higher quality while others that do not need it such as the background or flat surfaces um, will not be, uh, Lavina will not spend too much time rendering those. So I'm just going to use something like 0 .0, um, 0 0.1 and show an active overlay here. Um, yeah, I, th I think it's, um, currently I'm seeing uh, somewhat of a, somewhat of a, um, well, blinky <laughs> effect or, or sorry. So I'm going to quickly stop it, but just, you can see that some, some of the, some of the black pixels uh, appear more and more. Um, I think this is because I'm sharing my screen and something with the DirectX uh, overlay is being shown, but I'm just going to, um, you know, um, turn it off very occasionally to, to, to showcase that, that uh, the white pixels are less and less. And by the way, with this, you can see the, the frame rate is becoming higher and higher because, uh, because less and less pixels are being sampled from Lovina. Um, and uh, this is actually a, a quality and speed uh, setting that you can use and it works on the statics on the static frame currently and also with the high frame rate uh, sequence rendering as well so make sure that you use this one um, when when you're doing these renders <clears throat> So, Simeon, on the right-hand side of your scene, you've got lights, materials, and objects. Can you walk us through sort of what you can do with the, those, starting with lights, maybe? Yeah, okay. Uh, thanks for that. Um, actually, it was 
it was something that I, I wanted to talk about, but uh, somehow got carried away. <laughs> uh, and I think I mentioned a few, a few of the options here for the dome light. So I'm not going to cover this as well uh, again. Uh, we saw that in action. Um, but what I can what I can show here is um, a real quick way to, to to change the overall look of the scene. Uh, for example, for example, let's let's use the physical sky here, and I'm going to switch that. Of course, it changes the reflection because the environment now is is something um, is something different, uh, obviously. And then here down at the uh, at, at the bottom, uh, we have the light lister. The the first thing that you might want uh, that you might see, or at least uh, I'm currently uh, looking at, is the grouped uh, label here. Um, Lavina supports inst instance lights now, and because we have four lights in the in the uh, interior of the house, which have been instanced, we uh, Lavina grouped it, um, uh, grouped them. But um, I, I'm not interested in, in those lights yet. We're going to take a look at them in a, in a bit. Uh, we also have the sunlight, and if you have more lights, all of those are going to be right over here. Um, so let's actually close the timeline editor to give me more uh, uh, space. And we have uh, modes of this uh, of this uh, animation. Sorry, of this uh, light lister. It can be compact with the very very bare minimum of settings that you might want to do and might want to use. For example, the intensity of some of the lights, uh, sorry, the on and off, the intensity and the color of the lights. Uh, we were looking at the basic one, but you also have advanced, which exposes all the parameters that are supported and you can change uh, through all the lights. So I'm going to go back to the uh, basic ones again and switch the uh, sky model to be the new one uh, that was introduced in V-Ray 5, the, imp uh, the improved one, which uh, handles uh, sun below the horizon much better and makes the sky uh, uh, well, actually quite beautiful. Um, and to change the sky, I might, uh, you, have, you have two ways of doing that. You can, you can go to the objects tab and uh, go and find, and find the sunlight um, here and manipulate it using uh, the rotation, the rotation tool. But since this is very cumbersome, um, we've added uh, a special control for the sun based on altitude and azimuth. And I'm going to switch to that and uh, use the degree settings here, the two, the two degrees settings, which allow me to make the sun upper or lower in the, in the atmosphere. And the azimuth changes the uh, north uh, rotation, if you will. Okay, so I'm going to adjust that so that we can see a lot of illumination coming right in front of the house. Okay. And by the way, I'm going to lower the exposure a bit so that we can see uh, the sky. Change the azimuth again so that I position the sun right, right, beautifully. Uh, let's let's pick this tree over here to the left. All right. And as you can see, if I just bump down my exposure, and this, by the way, is the preview exposure, not the camera exposure. So if I right click on the spinner, I'm going to go back directly to the default setting, which is the what the camera sequencer is going to render out. And now we have a beautiful, uh, beautiful sun, uh, sunset. All right. Um, but what I want to, to achieve actually is, is go even below the horizon. So go even low, even low. And now, um, as you can see, there is some illumination now, but because I lowered the exposure, we can't see anything. So I'm just going to reset this. And you can see the, the beautiful, um, uh, you know, somewhat violet uh, colors that we get when the sun goes uh, below the horizon. And to make the scene more nice, uh, or uh, oh, sorry, uh, more friendly to, to, to the viewers out there, I'm just going to lower the exposure as a whole. And uh, just as a real photographer or actual photographer is going to do, so let's use something like an eight or maybe even six, so that everything is really, really bright. Actually, seven, and lower the sky even more. Okay, adjust the exposure once more. So maybe, maybe five or six. I'm just going to slide it not stick to a, to a specific f-stop. Okay, and now we have a, a somewhat a somewhat overexposed night shot, um, which would work really nice with uh, with our uh, with our uh, night nighttime shot. Uh, sorry, um, with our uh, lights turned on, and uh, because there are some lights in here, I'm just going to move to to try and to try and have a look at those. 
um, okay, because I know where they're located there at, at this part of the house. We still don't see them because it's quite dark um, and their intensity is, uh, is somewhat lower for this exposure. So let's try increasing that a few times. Okay, um, this is a point light source. So so the intensity here is, uh, is not, uh, um, is not physically accurate or uh, yeah, we should, we should have used an area light. Uh, but but either way we can uh, we can just bump this uh, really high, and now we have we have uh, somewhat somewhat of a night shot uh, prepared. Let's let's compare that with the original uh, with the original camera. Oops, um, because I didn't store my uh, exposure. I'm just going to bring it back again. And by the way, if yeah, because the uh, because the exposure values are saved in these camera slots, you can make animation for different uh, for different exposure as well. That would get included in the in the timeline. Um, but uh, here is a neat trick. I want to change now this uh, this uh, camera here to, to to update it with the new exposure that I just uh, set for this shot. And uh, I can just do that by saving uh, by pressing this button here. That will override this particular camera position with these particular um, uh, exposure settings. And uh, to strengthen the, the, the effect of this, uh, of this uh, camera here, uh, or sorry, of this effect uh, of the nighttime, I can go and make it a bit colder uh, on the white balance. And uh, finally, in the post, I might lower down a bit the highlight burn so that this area, this area here, does not uh, get over overexposed. And uh, yeah, we're we're kind of we're kind of there, uh, lighting wise. Um, so, Simeon, while you're in here, right, uh, you can adjust some of the tone mapping of your image, and I also see a place where you can load a uh, LUT file. Um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, what it how you can bring in a lookup table? Yeah, sure. That that actually is something um, I was going to talk about a bit later on because uh, it's like a final touch. But let's <laughs> let's go ahead and do the, this now, since since you asked. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The 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 lit, sorry the the, the post process uh, tab here um, only manipulates. Um, if you will, the pixels after they have been rendered, um, well, naturally, uh, it's, it's called post after all. Uh, but the highlight burn is a feature often used uh, when you're comparing when, when you're doing this type of this type of uh, shots where you have a very bright light source and and, and somewhat darker areas in the image. Uh, and obviously, the combination of this would be to even increase the exposure even more. And then use the use the uh, sorry uh, the highlight burn more aggressively to bring back the the uh, highlights here. But alternatively, uh, because this washes away a little bit the contrast and and and, and the saturation of the of the um, uh, colors of of, of, the, of the mid ground or uh, the mid colors, the mid range colors. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, we can compensate for this using some somewhat of a lot. Uh, I have a pretty vast collection of LUTs here. Um, some are, some are uh, black and white, uh, but some are also colorized. And uh, you can actually, as you saw, just click on the on the on on this blue label here, and Lavina will automatically preview all the LUTs um, that you have. Um, Lavina also ships with some built-in color um, LUTs, such as the filmic, uh, the, the default filmic behavior, warming filmic and cooling uh, as well, and some other more creative um which uh, which we we've included but i'm going to pick some of my vast collection of of loads here and make the decision while i'm just scrubbing uh, i'm not sure again if the responsiveness of the, of the webinar is 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 good enough to show but the change is instantaneous and i can have even more and even more and uh, i'm just going to stop browsing until i found find some 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 that i just uh, like uh probably this one here to saturate the greens a bit more, and um, and lower the exposure um, again. Sorry, increase the exposure a bit more so that I so that I can see the middle the middle uh, colors a bit more. <clears throat> yeah, great. Thanks for that. Okay, uh, we but this again. Uh, increased increase the the okay so so i'm getting here to the point where where the highlight burn is actually washing all the contrast away so i'm just going to 
bring this back and live with the fact that you can't have uh, both best of both worlds, uh, you know, overly, um, overly ex properly exposed dark and bright spots in the same picture, or it's very, very difficult to achieve. So I'm just going to bring this back a bit. Uh, and, and, and it also actually feels more natural when you bring the contrast back, um, at least to me. Um, of course, uh, one thing that I might do here in this case is uh, cheat a little bit and lower the intensity of the sun because I like the position here, but I can lower the intensity of the sun just a tad uh, so that I can bring back the exposure again. Um, and and this will this will bring up the middle the middle uh, the mid ground or the mid range colors again, but again now this is becoming coming out of the uh, photorealistic realm uh, <laughs> for for photorealistic uh, um, uh, sky model you should keep this at one. <clears throat> Um, but alternatively, one thing that uh, I wanted to also mention is uh, because currently we, we set up everything uh, uh, according to this shot, um, but but I, if I store this over here and go back to, for example, this uh, this shot that, that was uh, originally uh, set, now the illumination is very, very dark because uh, first I, I changed the intensity and I also changed the uh, horizon. But we can quickly do somewhat of a uh, experiments for light studies, and if I lower this down a bit, um, we can we can really quickly uh, examine how the shadows of the trees are going to affect our shot by just um, you know uh, sliding those spinners and make creative decisions actually um, on the fly because everything is 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 updated in real time. And also you can rely on this because, as I mentioned a few times, Slovenia is fully ray traced and uh, there is no cached uh, solutions or, or baked uh, baked uh, uh, shadow maps or anything. We just see, well, you get what uh, what you see. So it's a, it's a two in one, finding, finding the proper, the proper uh, camera, but also exploring your scene and finding the proper illumination. So Simeon, we got a, a couple of questions in the, the chat. People wanted to know if you can swap materials in there. Is there anything you can yes. do with materials? Yeah, I see. And this is a very, very valid question. So thanks for that. Uh, currently, the, 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 the way you do this is somewhat limited, but uh, you can also, you, you, you can do that. Uh, you can only work with the materials that were included in the VR scene. Um, so let's get this very wood, for example, and I don't know, um, go and get some object here that we want to apply wood to. And uh, currently I'm just going to change my field of view a little bit because uh, in the interior it's better to have somewhat broader, um, right? Okay, and uh, currently in interior settings, the uh, the exposure should be somewhat brighter, and this LUT currently doesn't work for that. So I'm just going to reset those guys and turn off the LUT uh, because it doesn't work in this interior shot um, at this point. Okay, so swapping materials. Um, let's select. Let's go to the selection mode here, and then select, for example, this wall. And since I have this. Uh, this this very material sorry very wood uh, selected i can just say uh, assign selection uh, sorry assign this material to selection and now this material has uh, has been changed now i'm not sure i'm not sure if the uvs or the uh, or the uh, tiling of this material was properly applied um so it wouldn't work in this in this particular case but i could have done uh but i can just uh um, you know, select an, a, a different material and apply that. So let's 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 give this a try. Aluminum clean, assign, and yeah, now we have a a, a very metallic um, shader here to this wall. It actually feels very more modernistic, so I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> uh, right. And uh, looks like we also have a question, Simeon, about bringing objects in or moving them around once you're inside? What can you do with sort of objects uh, in Lavina? Okay, um, I saw this question coming, so I've prepared a little bit of a, a, a little bit of an Easter egg, if you will. <laughs> uh, 
uh, or, or a fun, fun, fun part. So I'm just going to go out outside here um, to for this for this demo. So find a, 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 a more interesting um, place on the on the field here. Um, yeah, we can see an object that casts <laughs> um, proper shadow. But uh, anyway, so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, actually go back to to my previous uh, location from the server because I had uh, I had prepared a football um, here from uh, from Maya. Uh, Maya has this generic generic object uh, uh, procedural object um, which is football, and I'm just going to drag and drop it. And as you can see, this this tiny red arrow here appears. Which uh, shows the normal of the face that my cursor is uh, is currently um, uh, showing or uh, pointing at, and this will orient the newly imported uh, VR scene along this normal. So you you can snap actually objects. And of course, currently we have grass, so it does, it wouldn't make sense to pick something like uh, this one. But if you want to place, for example, a chair here on the porch or a wall or painting on the wall here, you could do so like like this. And then when, once I release uh, the button, uh, the left mouse button, you, you can either open or just merge the scene. And I'm just going to merge it. So loading that. And uh, well, I don't want the football there. So I'm just going to place it somewhere near my camera. Okay. And there we go. We have a football in the, in the grass. And I can press the Z key to zoom in, and uh, again make sure that I'm using the um, round selection because I uh, I'm going to select the the, the uh, ball and orient. Okay, yeah, I think I think this is a, a very good location to be honest uh, for this for this ball a bit upwards, and yeah, we can we can uh, we can leave it here. Oops. Currently, I have way too much perspective, which I don't like. So, so, <laughs> so bring this, so bring this back to somewhat of a, of a, I don't know, 50. And one thing that we can do now is, uh, is actually again press the Z button uh, to zoom extends on the ball. Um, and now adjust my camera. And uh, oops. And now I just my camera. Uh, by the way, it, when you're in 3ds Max, you have a, a hotkey. By uh, holding the Alt and right mouse button, will change the uh, the the field of view, which which is uh, easier to to navigate this uh, uh, from to, to trans sorry to, to transition between exterior and interior shots, uh, much nicer. But for this uh, option here, I'm 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 just going to go for uh, for a depth of field. Um, uh, set up here and i'm just going to enable this guy um i can i can increase that by lowering the f number uh, quite a lot and then i can pick up my focus point by using the tool uh here on the toolbar pick focus point tool and then click on the football to bring this in focus or alternatively uh select for example the background and bring everything here um in the in the bokeh and uh, yeah so it's as simple as that. So you brought in that object. It was a VR scene file that you had exported out of Maya. We've got a couple of SketchUp users that were asking in the, the webinar uh, and some Rhino users as well. Um, mm -hmm. Can you bring V-Ray scene files in from whichever application you're running? Yes, absolutely. Um, the, the 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 majority of your scenes uh, will be supported uh, depending on what type of uh, of, of uh, effects you have or of, of features you have used in these scenes. Uh, some of them might not be supported. For example, all these materials currently that we support are uh, the the power VR shader, the VR material, the VR material. Um, I'm, I was using the power VRA shader. Imagine, imagine what version of VRA I was thinking. Uh, <laughs> that was the first version of VRA. So apologies for that. The regular standard uh, VRA material, which has, uh, which has, uh, the, which, which is capable of reproducing the majority of uh, materials around uh, us in reality, is supported. Um, we will also add support for uh, for the updated version of this material with VRA five, uh, including clear coat and uh, sheen um and, and 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 this will be the your your swiss army knife so to speak of uh, of setting up materials for lavina every other material will be approximated 
um, in some way, so it will not showcase the full the full effect that have. For example, the two sided uh, the thin the thin the two sided uh, thin translucency material is not going to uh, transfer light uh, at this point. Uh, of course, this is going to be added uh, at some point uh, in the future, but currently it doesn't. Um, and for example, subsurface scatter and skin materials do not uh, scatter light, uh, and so on. Uh, but in generally, um, scenes from any VR integration, or our goal, and our goal is to keep this uh, scenes from any uh, integration of VR should be transferable to Lavina without uh, without major issues. <clears throat> so maybe we have time for one more uh, piece of the puzzle here, and that is we've got some folks that want to know. Okay, you've you've brought this into Lavina. You've maybe rendered out some previs animation. You've moved around it in, in real time. Um, but maybe you've set up some views or some lighting that you like. Can you get that back into 3ds Max at the moment? Yeah, absolutely. I I, I see where this is going, and <laughs> and uh, and I actually uh, showed this uh, a few a few. Uh, sorry about this. Uh, I sh I, sh I showed this um, in a video previously because this is a very uh, new and experimental feature that we we've, we've developed. Um, and and this so there is a way to get the to get your your animation back in in 3ds Max and also not only animation but all the the saved uh, camera presets or uh, camera slots back and I'm quickly going to show that um, it's done via uh, something called a VRDX file or a configuration file which uh, you need to save from the file menu here so I'm just going to um, to Let's just go back and really quickly scroll through the animation here to remind us uh, where this was going. Okay, so so this was our animation starting from 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 the first camera and then a linear transition between the other uh, two. So file save config as um, and then oops I do have <laughs> I do I do have a few configurations here. Let's pick up the desktop really quickly and say um, let's say test. Um, zero one. Save this. Okay. And now all the changes that I did in Lavina, um, and not only, and, and these include camera presets, the animation, but also the changes that I did to the lights, uh, to the assigned materials, the camera as well. These are these are included in this uh, VRDX configuration file. And uh, I'm going to launch up 3ds Max. So while this is loading. Uh, I want to mention also um, a neat a neat way to use the VRDX files if you wish. Um, so, for example, I might uh, I might just delete this camera uh, from from here, and now I change this configuration. But if I really quickly go and say open scene config, uh, you can you can restore the configuration uh really quickly as you can see so so uh the animation is stored there and you can and you can make variations of your scene and uh, a really cool way to utilize the vrdx is, is to save different variations of your scene and just uh, quickly load them up because lavina will not reload the whole scene again it's already in the memory it's just going to update um the state of the scene that was recorded in the in the vrdx scene so 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 this is uh, a cool way that you should uh, that you can use the VRDX files. It's a bit more technical. I realize that, uh, but but it does the job. And uh, I'm not going to open the scene once more because it is going to load some time. I'm just going to showcase um, the the uh, the script that we that we had. Um, it's uh, it's just going to be. Uh, let me just try quickly and 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 uh, load this up. Uh, I had it repaired, but since 3S, 3S Max crashed, um, it didn't save it. So apologies for that. But the script here is is uh, is just a, a macro script, which I'm just going to drag and drop, and then really quickly uh, customize the the script. It's located in the VRA section, and it's called uh, Import Changes from Project Lavina. Just going to drag and drop it. I'm going to steal a little, some. <laughs> Uh, screen space from from uh, the rail clone toolbar so it looks like that okay and it allows you to import uh, cameras animated cameras and uh, override the existing ones if you have uh, any so it says oh I need v-ray oops 
I didn't install the proper script. Sorry about this, guys. Uh, I should have dragged the, the MZP file. <laughs> Do that again. Come on. So let's disable this really quickly. And it's the MZP file that I needed to drag and drop, not the macro file. Um, Mac, Mac, come on, Simeon, Mac script 101. <laughs> and drag this here, run it, open it up. All right, I don't know what's going on here. Maybe, maybe I, I, I haven't. Uh, okay. So, as I said, this is an experimental feature. So uh, the script is open, um, and and yeah, maybe maybe this is because I'm using 20, 20, uh, 21, um, and and last time I checked, this was on twenty twenty. So uh, we need to we need to investigate and, and import uh, this and improve the script uh, right now. So apologies for this. Uh, it's it's a live webinar, and, um, <laughs> and it's beta, I wasn't prepared. And it's beta software too. So. We're we're it's really kind of software. living on the edge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the and also the script is 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 again open to to anyone. So if you, um, uh, since this is something that we're we're developing kind of on the side while while we have a more permanent solution, uh, to this to to, to this uh, functionality, um, you can you can either uh, give us a shout out in the forums that we that we need to fix it. Or, uh, or if you if you if you're uh, tech savvy with the Mac script, you can just fix it yourself. It's um, it's a very uh, small piece of code. Um, so so yeah, um, there are multiple options. But but again, uh, this is a good time for me to to mention that if you do have the um, uh, some problems with with the Mac script, uh, do let us know. Uh, because we we would really love to uh, to or or any any other issues of course uh, as you said this is a beta uh, software we are uh, is constantly under development and we would uh, we would really like to to uh, make it as useful to our users as possible. Great, Simeon, thank you for walking us through that uh, that demo. Um, it's awesome to see how easy it is for you to bring in a scene and start to explore that in, in real time. Uh, I think it's probably a, a good time for us to check in and switch gears, go over to Attila. Um, and uh, I know we're running, we're running a little bit late. We were pretty thorough with, uh, with the demo, but stick around. We're going to answer some of your questions at the, at the very end. Um, so let me switch back over to me really quick. Thanks, Attila, for, for joining us here. Um, I know that you guys have been working with Lavina since sort of the earliest beta, and I was curious what sort of got you interested in, in it and, you know, why Lavina yeah. for Previs, say, instead of Max? Yeah. Uh, basically, it's, uh, it's about how to explore a, a scene in a good quality. So, referring to what uh, Simeon said, uh, it's, uh, it's a great uh, scene explorer. Uh, and why is it important? To, to see the big picture, we have to, have to understand the fact that uh, there is a paradigm shift uh, in the art piece nowadays, because uh, it started with geeks uh, with architectural background who uh, wanted to show buildings in a, in a new way using technique uh, cool techniques and cool PC stuff. But right now, uh, our quiz is much more like a, uh, an applied art uh, than these applied artists are mediating between architects and, uh, and the public. And, uh, and this is uh, a completely new way of thinking. You have to have a more uh, streamlined uh, workflow. How can you achieve uh, a, a good story? And, uh, and the art quiz guys are storytellers, virtual photographers. And uh, the funny thing is, or the silly thing is nowadays, that these virtual photographers are sitting in front of their monitors and, uh, and checking a 2D representation of a 3D building uh, throughout a, a viewport in a shaded <laughs> uh, way or something like that. Okay, right now the new Max has a very brilliant uh, 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 viewport, but uh, let's be honest. We we we, uh, we we very much need of a tool which allows us to 
look around in our scenes and having a, an immediate high quality representation of the scene and being able to make decisions. And, uh, and uh, at BRIC, we have more than 70 people. Uh, uh, it's a big organization and we are always searching for solutions uh, to step forward. We, we have to raise the bar, we have to increase the quality and, uh, and increase the efficiency of the production pipeline. Therefore, we are always uh, searching for solutions which helps us in a way like this. And, uh, and a couple of years ago, Lavina appeared and that time I was sure that this is going to be some very good stuff. So I was, I was curious how it goes and, uh, and that's, why, that's why we started to test it. And in that time that you guys have been sort of, uh, you know, working with it and experimenting with in your uh, pipeline, is there is there anything that's sort of surprised you about it? Uh, yes, uh, uh, of course. Uh, um, uh, basically, uh, I was very much curious about this uh, this fluent workflow because uh, uh, what we have right now. Uh, we are working with architects and we are getting huge files, most probably a huge Rhino file. And when we export this Rhino file, we've got billions of polygons uh, from the curved uh, 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 buildings of uh, Zaha And uh, And uh, to work with these file, files is a challenge. And, uh, and I was curious, how can uh, Lavina handle it? And it fulfills its promise. That's the, that's the best news for me, because uh, uh, our workflow is to have some preparation, some pre-work on these files, and we just uh, uh, put it inside Lavina and being able to uh, look around. And this is a, this is a huge advantage. Uh, to, uh, to make it uh, to make it clear what's going on, uh, we are working in a way that uh, uh, that we have to produce a lot of nice uh, 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 draft previews in the early phase of the projects. So, but uh, there is an intensive uh, period in the very beginning of the project when we have to make these kind of decisions, a uh, 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 series of drafts. And, and we start to communicate with the client uh, through these uh, uh, draft previews. And uh, uh, game engine, all, all game engines uh, are great for if you have time and money for uh, tweaking with all the details, all the setups, all the back and forth, even we have data smiths and so on. It's a struggle. And this, this doesn't fit into this phase when we have to produce these uh, quick tracks. And that's, that's what uh, the first surprise that, uh, that uh, Lavina is able to handle this in a quick and efficient way. The other thing is uh, that I have to mention is the quality. Uh, actually, I was very much surprised uh, and, uh, and I congratulate Simeon in this, uh, in this uh, webinar because the file that we've uh, provided is absolutely prepared for, for, uh, for some uh, setup. And that was unintentional. It was a mistake that we've uh, left some point lights inside it. But uh, Simeon was able to tweak the, the light settings in a way uh, very quickly that it was, he was able to create a, a, a very good night shot, which is, which is good enough for a, for a, for a, a sketch. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's what we need. Uh, speed and quality uh, in the same time. So there is a trade-off in the quality. Of course, it's understandable, but uh, but uh, but I was I was uh, surprised on this. I know you guys at uh, at Brick also sort of you develop your own software like Pulse Scene Manager, and um, you know maybe you could tell people about it and also sort of how you've adapted it to work in your pipeline with Lavina. Yes. Um, um, okay. So for that, uh, I swap uh, to the shared screen right now. So if uh, if 3D Studio Max is visible right now, I hope it is. You're good. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Then uh, please let me let me show how it works. Uh, so yeah. Um, again, before I just showcase how 
what we have over here and how we integrated it into the Lavina, I just have to, I just wanted to highlight the fact that uh, what we are talking about here in the first place is this previous phase when we would like to have uh, a, a series of, uh, of images about the project. And for that, uh, we use uh, uh, C Manager uh, uh, heavily in our studio, which is uh, created for that purpose. So uh, whenever we start a project, we've just uh, uh, put many cameras into the scene uh, uh, um, and use C Manager, which is kind of a scene organizer, which allows you to uh, assign lights and, and aspect ratios, outputs whatsoever uh, uh, to your scene. So kind of a replacement of the uh, scene states in 3D Studio Max, uh, but in a way that it's uh, intuitive and gives you a visual feedback, which is very much important to, to be able to understand what's going on. And that was the moment when Lavina came into the picture because Lavina is good for that uh, exactly for that and, and fulfill uh, uh, these, uh, these uh, requirements of ours. So we just wanted to have a connection between, uh, between Lavina and, uh, and 3D Studio Max. And also that was the point when we started to work together with Simeon because uh, you guys are also uh, implementing this. And I, uh, I swear that uh, the script which was uh, uh, showed uh, working perfectly, so uh, and uh, and it's uh, it's very much okay. So it's just a case of the live uh, demo. Um, but what we have over here, we have a scene with uh, with uh, different camera angles, and I just want to, want to make a connection between this scene and between uh, the Lovina scene over here. And for that, uh, I just have to. Uh, I stepped. Uh, I skipped the the step when I step, uh, saved out the uh, uh, vracing file. So I loaded in the vracing file, and uh, here we are. We have it in um, in Lavina, and uh, and right now, uh, as Simeon suggested, we just have to save a config file. And once we save the config file, uh, uh, let's say something like this. Um, I can uh, swap back over here and uh, and uh, say that there is a config file which can be loaded in, uh, which is done. And uh, and uh, uh, since I have three cameras over here, I I can save the changes of uh, of uh, of the shot. Uh, and if I change the say sa uh, save the changes, I can see that I have three cameras that can be imported to Lavina. So right now, uh, if I go back to Lavina and I say that uh, uh, open the scene config file, which is the new one, then it uh, it creates the, the cameras for me that I have. The only uh, uh, um, uh, issue is over here that I have to turn on the physical light. Uh, so as you can see, here I have these camera angles and I have the animation of the nice color travel building. Uh, of course, this is a, just a Lego uh, uh, version of the color travel building uh, created by Andras Vida, one of my fellow colleagues uh, 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 in Brick Visual. So uh, now I have the, the connection between Max and, and Lavina. I'm able to do uh, changes such as Simeon that uh, made it so. Let's let's say that I have a light source over here, uh, which is uh, which is invisible for camera, but uh, but I just want to uh, I just want to uh, light up the uh, the back of this and and change the settings. So let's say that it should be much brighter, or the color should be a little bit uh, uh, bluer. Uh, in this way, I made changes on my scene, so I just have to uh, uh, save the scene config file. And once I saved it, I just have to uh, 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 apply the changes, which means that, as you can see over here, our light's uh, uh, position is changed, the intensity is changed, or the color is changed, and th that's how it goes. So this uh, this was the way how we wanted to uh, uh, create a connection and, and be, being able to continue the draft work 
uh, in 3D Studio Max. So right now, if I'm just uh, 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 create new view for myself and and saying that okay, that's that's my new camera, then I can easily uh, uh, save the the config file. And if I'm coming back over here and and reload it, then there will be a new camera, so I can apply the changes. So my new camera uh, is appeared over here, and for uh, being able to uh, to have it in my list, I just uh, I just uh, create a setup from every camera, and now I have the fourth camera as well. So this is the that that was the the way how we uh, work, uh, how we've been working on it, and of course this is also a beta, so it's it's uh, we developing together with you guys, and we just wanted to maintain a fluent uh, uh, continuity between uh, uh, between the Lavina and between the work after in 3D Studio Max. Thanks, Attila, for sharing that. I mean, um, obviously, that's one of the, the big keys to this is that fluid transfer of information back and forth. And that's something that we're kind of, you're working on and and we're also working on together. And, um, you know, it's 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 definitely something to keep an eye out in the future to see how Lavina, um, you know, continues to improve. What are some of the things that you kind of think of when you think of Lavina in the future? What are what are some ideas that you have? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's an inspiring thing uh, to uh, to think about Lavina, and uh, and we have uh, uh, nice discussions about the in house as well and and with the guys. On your end, uh, uh, because please let me give let me get back uh, where I started with the paradigm sh paradigm shift of the of the of our profession. So it's it's kind of a silly that uh, that uh, we are checking all of these things and all of these uh, uh, images in a, in in two D and uh, and uh, what we are missing over here is uh, to being able to walk around and understanding the real spatial relations between the the masses and uh, and uh, uh, yeah here here comes the the vr into the picture so uh, the problem is that we wanted to push vr in a way that uh, we wanted to use it for creating a beautiful end product but i believe that it's much more uh, capable uh, to aid the the production itself so uh seeing lavina i can imagine a kind of a tool which uh, which uh, allows the the, uh, the artists over here uh, to walk around in the scene uh, in 3d and, and having an understanding about the building and finding even better point of views even better stories uh, of course this won't happen tomorrow i Clearly understand, but this is something which, which can be an ideal uh, tool for for a virtual photographers like us. Uh, but to give you a, a more practical uh, example, uh, which can be done right now, as is with the beta, which is fantastic, that uh, you are able to uh, create uh, previous animations. Uh, we are uh, we are doing a lot of animations in uh, uh, Brick Visual. And this is always a struggling having the the the, the um, uh, viewport uh, sequences and uh, talking with uh, using the viewport sequences in the client communication, and uh, that's uh, Lavina is good for, uh, uh, especially with the uh, with uh, the script which allows the animated cameras uh, import to to uh, 3D Studio Max uh, that. Uh, that uh, you can able to uh, create uh, animations quickly in Lavina. I have to mention over here that um, the movie that I, I uh, made uh, with Lavina was a, a good example of that. And that was the first point when I was surprised that the quality is so good that it can be uh, kind of a mid, uh, mid quality and product as well. So I made some rules for myself when I, when myself when I create the, uh, the animation. And those rules were that uh, kind, like uh, having a frame uh, maximum five minutes uh, 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 render time. So in 4K. So 
of course, uh, uh, I use uh, RTX uh, uh, 6000, which is an advantage, but, uh, but uh, uh, again, it was surprising how quick uh, Lovino was able to render out the high quality animation. Attila, thanks so much for sharing, you know, your insights with everyone. And, uh, you know, we're certainly excited about where Levine is headed in the future too. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my screen. I just want to show everybody the link uh, where they can download the beta. And we will uh, have time to take a few questions. Um, hopefully, Simeon is still with us so that... Uh, he can answer some of the more technical ones. So yeah, absolutely. The the first thing that I want to tell everybody is that you know if you want to join the beta, you can do that today. You can go to chaosgroupcom lavina The video that Attila was just mentioning is actually right there on the page. You can see the animations that uh, that he and the team have done already in Lavina, and there's a pretty cool comparison to what they rendered out of Lavina in a few minutes of frame and what they rendered out originally from uh, the finals in V-Ray. Um, so that's actually one of the questions in, in the chat. There's a few people that are wondering like, well, with Lavina, do you still need V-Ray? And um, the, the answer is, is still yes. There's, there are limitations to what you can do with real-time ray tracing. The quality is quite good. Um, and uh, and it's amazing what you can get out of the box, uh, but there are some limitations to what you can do with re, uh, you know uh, the shading and and so on. And when you really want that final finished quality, that's where V-Ray comes in. Um, but the idea behind it is that you know you can use these tools together. You can use Lavina as a way to explore your scene, uh, introduce camera angles, set up lighting. Uh, find, you know, create that pre-visualization, get maybe client or team sign off on it, and then send it all back to, you know, the the final frame and render that out of V-Ray, you know, for for the the finished images. Uh, Simeon, is a question for, for you. Um, some folks were wondering, you know, what you need to to use Lavina in terms of your operating system and your hardware. Maybe you could describe that really quick. Yeah. Um, well, um, the Lavina is uh, uh, is based on the DXR and um, uh, the DXR ray tracing uh, API from uh, Microsoft which uh, currently is supported uh, exclusively on uh, NVIDIA graphics cards uh, from the latest uh, generation uh, RTX, the, the RTX generation. So, so this is uh, more or less the, the biggest, uh, the biggest uh, uh, entry, um, entry limitation that you need to uh, meet or the entry requirement. So, so if you have, if you have uh, one of those uh, uh, graphics cards this means that uh, you uh, or, or lavina can utilize the hardware ray tracing cores um in the graphics cards um and and uh, ray trace uh, really fast um although we support lower uh previous generations such as the 1080 ti um it's very very uh, recommended um i i can't stress enough uh, the importance of the ray tracing course because the performance is is uh, is uh, really um, uh, multiples uh, in the difference of multiples. So so um, I would strongly suggest uh, uh, getting an RTX gra graphics card if you want to try and and make the most out of Lavina. Additionally, um, since Lavina is a ray tracer, it can handle a lot of polygons, uh, a lot of data. Uh, but uh, but you still have to w w you still have to fit this on the memory. So depending on the size of your project, uh, you might want to consider a graphics card with more memory um, rather than rather than than smaller amounts. And um, and uh, for example, this is a, a really good uh, point where uh, for example a Quadro may be may be utilized because they have really uh, enormous amounts of, of memory. Uh, of course, this is a recommendation, not a requirement. Um, we've done a lot of optimizations in order to to try and 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 uh, shrink 
the uh, memory needed to render scenes and um, uh, and and to fit uh, geometric detail on the graphics card. So we did um, uh, whatever we, we we can, and we're going to improve that as well. Um, I, I saw a question about out of core technology. Yes, we are considering that as well. Uh, although it will uh, have a performance hit, um, we we are investigating in all of the ways to make uh, to make Lavina more accessible to to uh, a lot of uh, devices. Um, as far as another recommendation is, you should always have more uh, system uh, memory uh, than the GPU memory. Uh, because uh, otherwise, uh, because the assets have to be processed first from the CPU and then swapped on the GPU. So um, you, you you can see a huge performance hit if, for example, um, you have lower uh, memory um, than than the graphics cards um, on on the CPU. And finally, um, Lavino only works on Windows and uh, it does on Windows 10 and it requires um, the latest uh, or so it's not latest anymore, but uh, a somewhat later edition, um, the, the required version is uh, uh, 1809, uh, the update version of uh, Windows, which includes the DXR API um, as, a, as an update, but anything later than that would also work. And also uh, a specific driver version uh, for NVIDIA currently is a requirement. Um, the one the one that uh, it's, uh, I can't remember the exact version, but I think it was 440.61 uh, or, or something else. Uh, basically, if you're using the latest driver, um, you should be good to go. One addition here, uh, we we had a minor glitch with the latest uh, driver, which we uh, fixed today. So there is a hot fix. So if, if there are users that are already using Clovina now and had a problem with this driver, please do update um, your version um, from the download section. Uh, it's available now. And I think this, these are the, all the requirements that, that uh, we currently um, have. Yeah, and, and we have, you know, to, to double check on all those things, if you when you go to chaosgroup.com slash Lavina um, to sign up for the beta, we have the hardware requirements on there so that it'll help you walk through some of that. Uh, I did see a couple of questions here, Simeon, about the support for um, multi-GPUs. And at the moment, um, we can support two GPUs uh, simultaneously with, with decent scaling. Is that about Is that about right? Yes, yes, you, 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 this is absolutely correct. Um, it, depending on the project uh, and and actually on the on the scene uh, on the on the exact viewpoint that you're rendering, uh, the the scaling could be uh, becomes almost uh, almost two times. So you, you, we have a pretty good utilization of the two graphics cards. Uh, but again, it's it's uh, it's somewhat independent, so it may go down uh, in in some cases. Uh, to somewhat about 70% uh, faster than compared to one graphics card, um, and and we are um, yeah and 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 this is uh, an important part here is that um, currently we need you need to have Envy Link disabled uh, for in order for the, for the bo both of the cards to to work. Um, so this uh, this uh, an important um, uh, thing that we, you should note n n note. Um, but we're working on, on, on all of these things uh, and, and improve that, uh, obviously support more than, than two graphics cards, uh, scale them better. I mean, we do support them now as well, but, but uh, internally and, and, uh, and we would like to make the scaling a bit better um, and then, and then uh, release that as, as, a, as a support. Um, uh, couple more yeah. questions, couple more questions. Simeon, um, some people were wondering what what can be animated. I mean, we saw um, we saw you animate cameras, uh, of course, and we saw Attila bring in you know the animated uh, transforms on the Lego uh, Calatrava building. Um, can, maybe you could talk to us about the you know what you can animate and what our ideas are there. Right, right. Well, um, animation, animation uh, exported from the DCC in the VR scene um, is is supported 100%. Uh, so whatever it was 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 uh, animated in 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 the uh, creation creation tool uh, is going to be included in the in the uh, file. 
uh, with the exception of multiple cameras, uh, that is. Uh, so, so that would be placed on the bottom layer that I that I talked about in the animation editor, and it will be baked, so to speak. Um, but uh, you wouldn't be able to to manipulate that animation yet. Uh, we 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 are uh, working towards a more robust and more flexible animation editor. But at the time being, you can only create and uh, animate customly or uh, in a custom manner in Lavina only cameras at this point and you could uh, combine them with the existing scene animation so for example if you have cars or people walking around um, and the trees moving around um, this animation done in uh, let's say 3ds max for the sake of example um, you bake this in the viewer scene import it and then you just direct uh, find your cameras and, and make your shots in lavina on the on the uh, blue layer the one on top of that you can combine both the animations, but um, but you cannot edit the original ones uh, yet. And uh, and in Lavina, currently you can't create animations for objects. So, for example, if you want to animate the sun, you can't do that yet. Um, but of course, this is going to to be improved, and 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 this is on our roadmap. Great, thanks for that. We had a couple of questions too, uh, still on the animation topic. Um, some people were wondering how long it takes to, to render out the images. Um, and I think Attila mentioned that the images that they rendered from Lavina that they used for their movie um, that you can see on the chaosgroup.com slash Lavina page, um, he limited those to five minutes and they were 4K frames. So, you know, it depends on the number of samples that you use and the uh, the resolution, but you know, from our experience, it's it can be a range from a couple of seconds to, you know, a few minutes. Um, so it's pretty darn fast to be able to uh, to kick out an entire sequence. Um, other people were wondering, too, what kind of files you can save out of it. And um, mm -hmm. maybe, Simeon, you could just talk about what the what the file types are that you can you can render with it. Yeah, I, I just wanted to do, quickly add on, um, on on what Attila mentioned and what you what you uh, here just uh, shared, uh, and and that that is uh, we added the adaptive sampling uh, quite uh, a few a few versions after uh, um, Brick were able to render their videos, so they didn't have access to that, which which actually uh, increases rendering speed uh, for production. Uh, that is quite a lot, and um, and uh, now these five minutes will either give you uh, actually these five minutes will be much less. Uh, probably, probably I'm I'm of course wild guessing here, but maybe forty percent uh, less. Um, so some something like three minutes uh, for four K image. Um, and uh, and again, th th we're talking about production quality. Uh, you can speed up the rendering uh, if, if, for example, you want to make just a quick previous. You can tune up the denoiser and limit uh, and limit the the, the uh, uh, rendering per frame to let's say 10 seconds, and uh, you will get uh, somewhat decent images. Of course, heavily denoised ones, um, but but you will get the quality that I got uh, during the the webinar demonstration. Uh, because it's it was rendering just for a few milliseconds, and uh, and and Lavina is built in a way that you can that that um, you can scale your renderings uh, for de depending on on what how much time do you have and and what the condition is. So you can go really really fast real time or uh, or production wise at the cost of of uh, several minutes or a few minutes I should say now uh, with the adaptive sampling. So. <clears throat> So that being said, uh, get, getting back on the file types, uh, currently we just we 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 output only uh, PNG sequences and PNG files, and uh, and, and uh, we know that we we uh, customers would like to get different uh, very uh, sorry a selection of, of other file types, uh, but but uh, that was the first uh, intention because we have some. We have some uh, plans for the uh, HDR HDR image support. Uh, I, I probably we're we're going to go with uh, EXRs, um, but that would also um, <laughs> I, I I I can immediately guess the next question, and that would be uh, what type of render elements or uh, AOVs <laughs> are going to be supported, and uh, and because we we don't have uh, uh, many of those at the moment. Um, 
we it it will take some time for us to 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 expose other file formats so so uh, npng being lossless file format um uh, we we picked that as a start great so i think that about wraps it up for us um I want to thank Attila for joining us. Thank you, Attila. Thank you, Simeon, for your uh, demo and walking us through Lavina. Um, thanks, everybody, for tuning in to the webinar. Again, if you, uh, you know, you're interested, you want to check out the beta, there's the link, chaosgroup.com slash Lavina. And I'm going to answer the last question and then sign off, and that is, what does Lavina mean? And uh, as far as I know, Lavina is the Bulgarian word for avalanche. Is that right, Simeon? Yes, that's, that's absolutely correct. <laughs> Great. So it's sort of an avalanche of rays that, uh, you know, that are rendering your scene. Um, thanks again, everybody, for joining, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.